Hello, everyone, and welcome to Plug and Play, easy AI-powered safe communications for multiplayer games. I am Trey. I'm a product manager at Unity for the VBOX moderation and safe text products. We also have Nevo with us. Hi, I'm Nevo, a staff software engineer uh, working on content safety. And this is Yoram. I'm Yoram. I'm a community manager and developer at Triangle Factory. We're a 40-people team uh, based in Belgium. Uh, we make VR shooter games. Our two prominent VR shooter games are Hyper Dash, our free-to-play, fast-paced shooter, and then Breachers, which is our tactical VR shooter. Both games have a esports scene, and especially in Breachers, uh, voice communications are very important. So we're going to talk about a few things today. First, we're going to go over toxicity and how exactly it impacts our games. Uh, and then we're going to recap some strategies from last year that we did when we deep dived with Safe Voice about how we keep players safe and engaged. And we're going to actually show some features that help you implement some of these safety strategies. We'll continue with a walkthrough of our moderation platform and some of the main workflows provided. And then Neville will actually do a demo and full integration journey uh, about using the product as well as uh, the dashboard. So, how exactly does toxicity impact our games? And can we actually quantify this? Can we measure the cascading impacts? Can we make this a little bit more tangible? So we like to break this up, and I'll kind of get out of the way here, uh, into three main pillars. And it starts with our main character here, the player, of course. And it starts with their player experience. And in short, when players are dealing with toxicity, they're a lot less likely to enjoy and even participate in your game. And players that are not having a good time are also a lot less likely to invest time and even money into your game. In Breachers, we saw people slowly over time telling us we had a toxicity issue. And that, that was the reason they were no longer playing our game. It's such a shame to see your hard work be tarnished by bad actors. And toxicity can even build this detrimental reputation around your game and brand. But showing your community that you care will help not only build trust, but also be more enticing to new users. So what are the numbers, what are the metrics on the actual impact here? In 2023, 74% of players reported they experienced toxicity at least once, which is a very large number. Um, about half of the players said they experienced it sometimes, and almost a quarter of players said they experienced it frequently. Because I can see behind the curtain, I can tell you that most of this toxicity goes unreported. You can feel players don't think reporting works or it's not impactful enough. And this is not a secret, but toxicity is a large, 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 large problem in multiplayer games. So much so that all these players are experiencing toxicity, but the overwhelming majority of players, 92%, feel that solutions should be implemented. And I think we'd all agree that players deserve a safe and enjoyable gaming space, which is why we're all here. So show of hands, who thinks that a quarter of players avoid a game entirely due to toxicity or the reputation of the player base? How about half of players avoiding a game? Three-fourths? Okay, it's kind of high. If you said half, you're pretty much on the nose. It's about 49%, but about half of players avoid a game entirely due to toxicity and the reputation of its player base. From that, about 60% of players have reported quitting a match at least once or quitting the game altogether due to how other players have treated them. And then 61% of players have reported not spending money at least once in, um, in a game where they felt uncomfortable because of toxicity. So toxicity impacts key areas of your game's success and kind of hits all these areas of your whole flow um, and has this big cascading impact from player experience all the way to reputation and impacting things like user acquisition, attrition, playtime, spend, you name it. So, and we see this in more stats like this where games deemed as non-toxic see, on average, a 75% higher monthly average spent. And it's pretty simple, but players just don't want to spend time or even money in a place where they're not being treated well. So how do we actually keep players safe and engaged? This is a callback uh, to our talk last year. We did a deep dive on Safe Voice uh, and talked about some strategies in managing your community. Um, we're going to expand and recap on some of these, and then we will also bring them to life in our platform with some features that we have. First, we'll want to... Oh, let me get out of the way here. Uh, first, we'll want to empower users. And so we've actually updated this from Communicate last year, because we want to emphasize that users need agency in controlling their own experience in their game, as well as communicating back and forth with you as a developer on your expectations, 
uh, what appropriate behavior is, and what your intentions are in the game. Next, you will need to detect things. Um, it's just impossible to go through all the content and things going on in your game that get reported to you or that are happening. And so quality detections and analysis will help scale your team to handle impactful content. Next, we'll need to promote what we want to see out of our community. And so we'll need to set expectations on what appropriate and inappropriate behavior is. And while that won't change players entirely, you can definitely encourage and model good behavior and consistently act on it for an overall positive change in your community. With the first three pillars handled, you'll be able to observe a lot of what's going on in your community in depth. Um, and you'll be able to understand what players are saying, how they feel you're handling the situation, what players are doing. You'll also be able to see new problem areas and things that are changing and emerging throughout your game. Finally, we can take all of these insights we've gone over here. We can put these together uh, over some time to kind of figure out exactly how toxicity emerges and manifests in your game. And then you can handle much more complex and nuanced situations of toxicity by kind of understanding what's been going on. And you can then find what promotes positivity in your game. And so while toxicity may still emerge, this will definitely help keep it from spreading as much. So how do we actually bring some of these pillars to life? Well, that's what we are focused on here uh, at VBOX as we build the AI-powered safety suite. So we're enabling players to not only provide, uh, sorry, we're enabling games to not only provide a robust in-game voice and text, but also make that voice and text interaction in gaming space safe inherently by design. Vivox is a powerful tool that we already use in both of our multiplayer games. Uh, we don't use safe voice as it didn't exist when we needed it. Uh, we use a third party solution and have built on top of that what we felt necessary to fulfill similar goals as the pillars mentioned before. But Safe Voice provides many of these out of the box and likely way better than we could ever build. So let's link back and see how we could use Safe Voice to implement our moderation tech stack. So our core voice and text system feeds directly into the AI-based Safe Text and Safe Voice analysis systems. The analysis and insights and detections from those two Safe Voice and Safe Text systems feed into the moderation platform to provide your team with tools to scale to handle your community and manage impactful content. And so let's apply some of these safety strategy pillars to some of the main features. First, let's empower users. We can empower them to call out bad behavior with player reporting that automatically collects and coalesces safe text and safe voice evidence so that reports are meaningful. And we can give, uh, we can give players agency in their experience by allowing them to mute and block other players as needed. In HyperDash specifically, we allow flexibility who you talk to by using multiple voice channels, user-controlled session settings, mutes, and multiple, multiple communication methods like voice activity, push to talk, push to mute. Next, detection. Safe voice and safe text both detect toxic and disruptive behavior, picking up on nuance, context, and tone. You can also understand vulnerable groups being impacted specifically by the events going on, and you can practically filter the chat to protect players from direct harm. In our games, you can report individuals for things like inappropriate names, cheating, verbal abuse, and a few more. But user reports alone are fallible. To give an example, we recently added griefing to that list of options. And we noticed the amount of reports for all other categories drop. This means that players were reporting for reasons that didn't really match the problem. Having a good and statistical data points are important to, to understand the actual room temperature, especially when you process 70,000 voice hours per month. Active voice moderation provides this with much more consistency. And we can then take action on toxicity, and we can also set expectations for our community. With the platform we have, actions like muting or banning from communications work out of the box with your Vbox integration, and they happen in real time. You can even create your own custom actions to do things like rewarding players for positive behavior. Our system is something we build up slowly. We start with manually reviewing the auto clips based on severity. This allowed us to get used to our tools, see how it handled some situations, and how players responded to our actions. But we could never handle 70,000 voice hours per month by just doing it manually. So we added automatic banning uh, for cases that crossed an unquestionable threshold. Uh, and this took care of the most egregious cases. 
It all sounds scary, and it did so for us in the beginning. But we did this gradually. So we start. So we started with the highest of high scoring incidents, let it run for a few days while we reviewed it, and if we were happy, we tried some lower scoring ones. We did that for some time until we could handle every situation we found banworthy. The result of this months-long process is that the moment somebody has an infraction, it only takes a few seconds before it gets handled. Players in instantly see that certain behavior is not approved of and that we take toxicity seriously. And then we can zoom out to try and understand our community as a whole and kind of see the big picture going on. Community health aggregates analytics from Safe Voice and Safe Text to give you the idea of what all the player behavior happening around your community is. And player history and reputation scores in Safe Voice and Safe Text give you simple summarized scores to understand individual player behavior. We had our banning, but we noticed that the change wasn't felt between the players. This made us add a 24-hour rolling mute system where we could handle lower scoring incidents. Here we could give them a warning, and if their behavior didn't change, we mute them for some time. If muting still doesn't work, we'll hand out a ban instead. Since then, we've seen a long-term drop in toxic situations. And then we can use all these insights to customize and adjust our own policies and detections to tailor safe voice and safe text to exactly what our community needs to stay safe. In Breachers, we have a ranked matchmaker. In that competitive mode, every match matters for highly skilled players. And when tensions are high, toxicity rises. So while we normally allow friendly chatter between two teams before they play their match, for competitive, we recently had to make the conscious decision to be more restrictive. This meant for us removing any way to communicate with them. Another issue we had in the beginning was words being recognized wrong. For instance, a five night, five night at, <laughs> five <laughs> nights at Freddy's beatboxing meme, where they would say a muffled horror and it would sound more like an or, and that would be eventually be picked up, picked up as toxicity. It's not something you can prepare for. But we allow anybody to contact our support, and we will review any recent infractions that happened. If a mistake was made, we'll revert it. And if needed, look for systemic ways to make it not happen again. As you can see, Safe Voice can help you at, any, uh, at every step to manage your toxicity. And by doing so, we can strive for a safer uh, environment that players enjoy. Thank you for all your real life insights, Yoram. Um, we're going to do a walkthrough of the moderation platform and look at a bunch of individual features. I'll talk through a few of them, and then I'll hand it to Nevo after that to do a live integration to do exactly this. So as I mentioned earlier, when players submit reports, uh, safe voice and safe text evidence is automatically collected and coalesced into the reports you see here, and they end up in this dashboard. Uh, the dashboard allows moderators to filter, sort, and prioritize reports so that they can, affect, they can handle uh, the impactful content effectively. As we kind of step through our flow here, you can look at the details of both the safe text and safe voice uh, collected evidence, which collects uh, all the evidence between the relevant players of a report for all the channels they were in. Team, team chat, uh, lobby chat, could be multiple, right? So, when we dive into the safe voice evidence, we actually see a summary of toxicity, uh, disruption, and an overall risk score. And we point out the specific moments of toxicity that happen uh, and allow these uh, to be played back for quick review by moderators. And then if we move over to the safe text side of things, we bring the context aware text detections all the way to the top. Uh, and then this allows moderators to quickly see what's been going on and uh, what's problematic. And they can dive into the, <laughs> to the specific text detections going on uh, and see the context of what happened to review. Then, after review, we can dive into individual player history and behavior to kind of get an understanding of exactly who we're dealing with, any kind of past infractions, overall behavioral metrics, um, and kind of a general overview of who they are so you kind of know how to handle them. Finally, moderators can then take action on players with sanctions that work out of the box with your VBOX integration, so muting, banning, all that kind of stuff works uh, in real time and really with just the click of a button here. Uh, and then we also allow custom actions. So you can create your own custom action for things like thanking the player for reporting the inappropriate behavior, uh, and then you can have those hit your own backend, you can have them hit a web webhook, you can kind of do whatever you want with those. And 
The chat filter itself is configurable, so if you have specific needs for your game for what chat needs to be filtered and what does not, you're allowed to configure. There's more things here than this, but if you scroll down, you're allowed to configure any of these to the strengths and um, severities you need. Stepping through a little bit more, uh, when players submit reports, you can actually configure when safe voice evidence is collected. So specific types of reports uh, need evidence for voice, some don't. If someone's reporting cheating, like aim snapping, maybe safe voice isn't that relevant. But for a lot of these things here in inappropriate communication, um, they are quite relevant. And you can configure exactly how long you're looking in the past to get analysis for. You can also customize the scoring and analysis from Safe Voice. So you can kind of see all the weights and numbers here in this really big, really big picture. But with the toxicity detection of Safe Voice, you can kind of adjust all these weights and uh, classifications in order to tailor the score to exactly what you are trying to detect. And you can create custom scores as well with similar weight mechanics that you can kind of create your own score to curate content you need to deal with. And then you can even make expression tags in Safe Voice. So you can create your own expression or a single word, uh, and you can add it as a tag, and you can feed that directly into the toxicity detection or even your own scoring or your own custom scoring that you've created. Um, and so, for example, let's just say that the word table has become wildly inappropriate in your game, um, and things like calling someone a table leg is really bad now. You can add table leg to the expressions. Uh, and then you can feed that into the toxicity score. And you can see those detections and kind of see, ah, they're using the new slang to be toxic in the game. And you can count for everything kind of changing or new terms coming up. And coming soon, we'll be able to detect the positive insights from both voice and text for things like collaboration, encouragement, praise, and gratitude. And you can configure the custom scoring for positive things just like you could in toxicity I showed a couple slides ago. And then we can arrange different insights to create player segments in Safe Voice. So taking positive insights from Safe Voice, we can identify, highlight, or even reward players that we think are being champions of our community, uh, or you know, build more segments out of the different behaviors that we're tracking and analyzing. And then we can finally take a big step back and kind of look at the overall metrics analytics and our overall community health. And instead of the individual situation we're looking at, uh, just analysis, we can see on the right, you can see the voice community health metrics showing you kind of trends and things changing over time. On the left, you can see your own team's moderation activity, seeing how often you're closing reports, how much uh, sanctions you're applying, and kind of all the other moderation activity you might be doing uh, in the platform. And so that's a walkthrough through some of the main functionalities and workflows of the, of the uh, moderation platform there. And then I'm going to hand it over to Nevo to show us a live integration. Uh, about how to use the product platform and the dashboard. Thank you, Trey. Thank no. you, Yoram. Right, so for the, those of you who came in late, my name is Nevo. I'm a staff engineer here uh, working on comms and safety. And today I'd like to show you an end-to-end -end demo of how you can integrate Vivox uh, with Save Text specifically. We're going to integrate a, a reporting flow, and then we're going to go and integrate custom, a custom action at the end. So we have built-in actions, but we're going to integrate also a custom action. We're going to use some packages you've already seen, uh, multiplayer play mode that comes with Unity 6, then multiplayer widgets, and of course, Vivox and moderation. Let me just change to the presentation. No, sorry, I guess. All right. OK, so we have this multiplayer game. You can see I can move both players, something uh, I built. And it's pretty nice, but it's not very interesting. I want to create a richer experience for our users, so I want to integrate comms. So how do I go, go about doing that? Let's so go to the game scene. Then we can right click, multiplayer widgets, cones, text chat. Now I've prepared it in advance, so I have a prefab, but it looks exactly the same. And boom, just like that, you have text integrated into your game. Uh, it takes care of everything behind the scenes, authentication and integrate, uh, authenticating with Vivox and all of that, and it just works. All right, let's also add a player list. 
just to see who's in our game. And let's play this and see what, what it looks like. Uh, let Unity load. All right. So this is also using lobby and relay behind the scenes to create the rooms. All right, so now we have the two players, and they can talk to one another. And as players uh, do, they're always excellent to one another. So let's just do a very normal interaction between two players in a game. Hi. How do you, can you see the text, by the way? Howdy, friend. Right, so uh, this is an imaginary example, and of course, probably never happens in, in games. Uh, more likely, we'll have people being not very nice. So, so let's write something like, you're playing like shit. All right, so now you see the first layer of protection that uh, our suite provides, which is real-time filtering. Um, this allows you to just send messages, and the, the, uh, the text is being filtered in real time. Now. This is one layer, but of course, as you saw in the presentation, we want to empower users to also report other players. So um, you can see here that there's a report button, and if I click it, nothing happens, because we need to integrate it. So let's do that right now. All right, so we have this script. Uh, there's some code here around um, keeping track of the player list and attaching a report button, and the report button uh, uh, adding an on-click event, and the on-click passes the player ID, so we can act on it. So let's just add some code, uh, some debug code to see that we're actually firing this and everything's okay. Reporting player with ID, and we can pass in the player ID. All right, now we want to integrate the report flow. Uh, how does that work? For that, we use the moderation package. And the moderation package introduces a singleton and a few functions. One of them is new report. And maybe you can see that, but it also suggests uh, that the arguments are player ID and the report reason. We also have that in our docs. So we can pass in the player ID of the offending user. It, it takes the ID uh, of the person submitting automatically. And we can create a new report reason. So it's a fixed list. You can see all of them here. Again, available in our docs. So I'm just passing it here by value. But of course, in a game, it's going to be dynamic. You're going to show a pop-up probably. And uh, a user will be able to choose from, from a list of uh, possible report reasons. So let's store it in a variable called report. Called report. And this API is really nice because um, you can already debug everything that is in report. Because of the tight integration with Vivox, we take the list of players, the overlapping channels between the offending user and the reporter, and we just store everything in the report. And of course, the text and the voice evidence as well. Right. So all of these are also mutable. So if, for example, I want to exclude the player from a report and not, re let's say, not uh, use the, their voice, then you can do that here very easily. But we're going to use the report as is and call the moderation singleton again. And for and now, we're going to use the report player, which, of course, accepts a report. Now, this call can throw. So let's just wrap it. I'm going to try catch clause to make sure this demo goes well. Debug, uh, log error, error reporting, and then e dot message. And that's it. That's all you need to do in order to integrate uh, a reporting mechanism into your game. It's basically two lines of code with some ceremony around it. 
All right, let's play and see what happens. Okay. All right, we have our two players again, and this time they're going to be nasty to one another. Uh, let's start with saying hi. Trey, do you have an idea of uh, some toxic behavior I can write here? Let's go with, you suck at this game, you noob, for 500 points. <laughs> you suck at this game, you noob. And note I'm using lead speak is here, here is lead speak here as well. So the detection um, of the real-time filter is not just a block list of words. It's context of aware. It's much smarter. Then it will detect this as toxicity, as you can see here. All right, this of course makes me very sad, Ray. So I'm going to send you a sad emoji, and I'm going to report you. And you probably can't see this, but the log that we added, reporting player with ID. Uh, so now if we go to the dashboard and refresh, and we should see the report here at the top of the list. And there it is, submitted 20 seconds ago. Let's see what we have here. All right, so the first tab is safe voice sessions. As we're not using uh, voice here, this is empty. Now, integrating voice is as simple as you've seen integrating text. It's just the, the setup here and having multiple voices makes it complex. Uh, you can catch me after and I can show you a voice integration as well. It's basically uh, checking a box. Then you have the event logs. Um, you have uh, when someone reported, joined the channel, left the channel, muted someone. So it's additional metadata coming from Vivox. Again, because of the tight integration, that allows the moderator to make the best possible decision. And then you have the safe text session. Let's see what safe text thinks, thinks about this. So can you see this OK? Yeah. So you can see that it's reported uh, gameplay criticism and profanity. You can see the entire uh, correspondence here. We can see the filtered messages. We can see the original messages. And then we can decide what to do. Uh, we can probably take an action. I don't like this behavior uh, in my game, so I'm definitely going to take an action. All right. So now this is uh, the here you'll be able to take an action. We've been using uh, toxicity, so we're going to only use the offender side. Uh, but as shown in the presentation, um, you can also reward a reporter, for example, telling them thank you for uh, reporting someone else. And coming soon, also with the positive play, you'll be able to uh, reward players that are being extra helpful. But for now, we're just going to remove that. And we will select an action. All right. So here we have all the built-in actions. Block from voice, ban from game, muting. You can mute just text. You can mute all communications. Um, Yoram, what do you think, as the co community manager, what, what uh, action should we use? Maybe just deduct some points? Just deduct some points. What a surprise. <laughs> All right, let's try and do that. So obviously, that's not part of our built-in uh, built actions. We're going to have to write a custom action for that. So how do we go about doing that? Let's exit the screen. And just to say that, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, here there's a scoring mechanism. So this player has 700 points, this player has 1,000 points, and they collect, can collect points in the game. Now I'm going to deduct some points using a custom action, and that scoring mechanism is based is using economy. And I created a new currency ahead of time, called it Unite Points. And uh, each player, when they join a game, they get some balance of this currency. And I want to deduct that. So we're going to start by uh, creating the new action. 
custom action. So you have the button here, create custom action. I've uh, already created it in advance, so I'm going to just add it. I called it deduct unite points with an uh, action ID of deduct unite points. It's a one-time action as opposed to a time-based. Uh, you can obviously write actions that uh, span, you know, th that last for three days. Let's say if you want to mute the player for three days, you can do that. And it's a negative action. So just activate it and save. Right, now we have the custom action. And the moderator can already go to, that, go to the drop down and choose it from there. But we need to tell the system what to do when that action is triggered. So we need to write the code uh, that would trigger it. That would, that would trigger when this is, when this is uh, fired. So as you can see here, uh, we can add and configure uh, the script that is attached to these actions. And to do that, we're going to use cloud code. I'm going to write a new script. Call it unite2024. And I'm going to use the, uh, we, uh, the moderation template. The moderation template uh, gives you some actions for some common use cases. So we're going to just alter that. And there you go. All right. So there's a bunch here. I'm going to zoom out a bit. I'll zoom in soon. Let's just delete some stuff here. So you can see there's refund player uh, actions as well. If, for example, a moderator made a mistake and uh, a player is not happy with, um, with uh, the fact that it was banned, then we can also revert some actions. Uh, and we can write it here. We can block from communications. And here you can also like, hook into your own systems, game servers, if you want to do that. I'm just going to keep uh, the, this function here. Then I'm just going to edit this quickly and remove this from here and uncomment it. All right, so let's see what this script actually does. Oops, sorry. Just zoom in. All right, so there's uh, this part, which is the hook. So this will trigger every time an event uh, is fired. And you get all these parameters for free, the context, the, the logger, the params. And we're going to call handle event. And what it does is basically a router. It unpacks the event, and it checks what type of action it is. And uh, when it finds the one uh, it's, it's interested by, it, it fires the correct function. So let's change this to deduct unite points, which is uh, the action idea of the custom action we created. For the sake of consistency, consistency, let's change this as well. Points. Right, so this deduct unite points is fired. Let's see what this does. This interacts with the economy API, the currencies API, which is part of economy. It unpacks or extracts the project ID from the context that, like I said, you have in the script. And it calls decrement player currency balance. You pass in the project ID, uh, the, the Unity player ID, the currency ID, and the amount. Now, 1,000, I think, is a bit too harsh. So let's deduct 100 points. And the currency ID, you can find it up here at the top. Uh, it's the ID of the currency, which was unite points. Uh, all right, I think that's it. Let's see. Anyone spotted an issue? Hopefully no issues. Right, so let's save and publish the script. The last thing we need to do is to connect the two parts, go to the uh, moderation actions, and tell the system that, OK, we have this script. Let's use it whenever a moderator fires a custom action. So this is our new script, Unite2024. Let's go back to play reports. Go back to our report. And take an action. I'm going to remove this again. And now you'll see that we have the deduct Unite points uh, action here. So I'm going to choose, oops, I'm going to choose that. 
I'm going to choose a reason, verbal abuse. J just as a refresher, uh, this player here was the toxic player, and he has 1,000 points, and uh, I th uh, I'm going to expect he's going he's to have 900 points after I apply this action. So I'm going to apply an action, and now he has 900 points. So we've seen how to integrate VBOX, how to uh, create a, a, a report mechanism, how to write custom actions, quite a lot of things we've covered in 15 minutes. Um, yeah, thank you. I thank you for your time. I'm looking forward to hearing your questions. Tech stack again. Thank you, Nevo, for the, for the whole demo. And time for Q&A. Any questions? Yeah, uh, <laughs> thank you for your talk. I think this is a very important issue that you're solving. And I just Googled you, and your solution is implemented in Valorant and League of Legends. So I didn't know that you had such a large user base already. Um, so my question I have to uh, one is uh, about the AI part. I would like to know a bit more about that. Like, users can be very creative. And as you said, maybe table becomes like a cursed word. So how do you find out about that? And do you also have people listening in, or is it just the AI that picks up on that? Um, and also, you mentioned that it picks up on the tone, which I think is really interesting as well, because words can have different meanings, and sometimes table is just table. Um, and the other question is, well, this is more like a darker topic, but about the grooming issue, sometimes the positivity is the issue. like. Uh, a guy pretending to be a boy and uh, striking a friendship with someone, and there's no negativity there. Uh, but actually, it's the positive communication that is the danger. Uh, so uh, I don't know if you, you go into that with your solution. But um, yeah, th those are my questions. Yeah, um, I think there's three parts. Uh, the second was expression tags and like customized words. How do you figure that out? The third one was grooming. What was the first one again? Oh. oh okay. Um, yeah. Um, so, oh, by the way, our safe voice PM is right in the front. You talked to her after <laughs> for way more details, probably. Um, but um, the model uh, is like we own the labeling process. Like we uh, are looking at things like tone, intent, energy, volume, and then also what was said. So you're trying to put all these things together to create a more, say, contextually aware model. Um, and that will do things a little bit more, I think, more in depth uh, when you look at like the playback of tracks. You're looking at not only what was said and like what might be toxic um, or, let's say, impactful in general, and you're looking at the basically the energy and the intent of what's going on. Um, so that's kind of like the basic version of the model. Um, that's probably the extent I'll answer you, but um, there is someone here who can answer in more depth later. Um, but uh, And then to the middle point about uh, expression tags. So uh, if so, we aren't picking up on like nuanced words that might become toxic. I think what you might see is a detection of something that has like aggressive intent or a lot of energy or so, you know, maybe the word table is really bad, but surrounding it, you have like other toxic things going on. And so you can kind of frame and start to see things develop that way and kind of get little pointers. Um, and then as you kind of figure out exactly what's going on, or you see in other places popping up, like in Discords or Reddits or somewhere else where terminology starts to get used, then you can go and add that expression yourself um, or whatever expressions or phrases are needed and then kind of assign them the appropriate weights and scores so they do feed the model and kind of help you find those in the future. Just to add that we, we always update our models, right? And uh, of course, when there's new expressions uh, that come up that may, may now are toxic, then uh, we add them. Just to answer your question about uh, someone pretending to, see, to be someone else, uh, we do have a report type of predatory behavior. And um, yeah, so we, we do have some uh, you know, in, in our because we also have text and we have uh, the acoustic analysis, we try to detect that type as well. So it's not just about being uh, verbally abusive. Or, yeah. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Um, thank, thank you for the presentation. Very interesting. 
Um, I, I would kind of continue of, of the subject that how, how do you manage to judge because it, it's it's not a report, it's delation, but it's 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 it kind of from in a regard against the freedom of speech and how you you will handle like politics aspects if you have a game like we have the um, Kamala Harris and Trump Parliament that this is on fire it's very complicated and how you you apply and and you will be accused to to choose a, a party from another one so how you handle that uh, how it works yeah the so the second half of that was about like bias and like kind of how do you like deal with things that start lean one way or the other how the world evolves the first half can you repeat like that again uh, it, it was linked it, it mean that's how you how um it's part of the cancel culture like if you have three players or four players that report someone but the guy is not bad oh it's yeah just the four mm. accuse him uh, too much i mean how how do you do you handle that the guy it's it's complicated to judge people and their I understand when people start to shout and, and, and say that uh, you're shit, you're uh, stuff like that. It's horrible. Okay, it's easy. But the more complicated situation. So. Yeah, I think, um, so in the first half, uh, when players are in a channel all together and like a report gets submitted, uh, we are able to collect basically all the players that are involved in that channel. And so like you might not be, let's say, like between the two people that are interacting, you might not be the person involved, but if you're reporting it, you're part of this channel and you can still report that bad behavior. And then you kind of see like more than the two people. So you can like six tracks or six audio tracks potentially um, of what's going on. And that might help handle some use cases where like maybe both parties aren't like, you know, or they, you know, one person doesn't see the issue going on with the, let's say, offender. Um, so there is that. Um, as we get into probably the next slide is the world changes. I don't know, Neville. Do you think um, you have any insight on how we kind of keep things up to date and so just, just to build on what you said, um, when you have, let's say, four players, like you said, and three of them are reporting one player just for some, and he's not being uh, toxic, yeah. it could happen, of course. And but in that case, our um, system won't detect any, any toxicity, right? So. Um, so of course nothing will happen. We can also create. We haven't we haven't shown this, but we can create like um, cues where if a toxicity detected in the report is like below a threshold or there is no toxicity, then we just send it to like uh, to another bucket. So the moderator won't even have to handle it. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Uh, I wanted to ask how you deal with different languages. Uh, anybody who's used some AI chat function in another language than English knows that it's not always great. Also, different languages and cultures use different tones for emotions. And uh, another related thing is that people often more and more mix languages uh, all together and was wondering how your system deals with all of those things. Sure. So uh, currently, uh, our text solution, safe text solution, uh, is supports many languages. I'm not going to list them here, but uh, don't exactly don't remember the exact number, but uh, yeah, many languages. With uh, Safe Voice, we currently only support English, but we're rolling uh, a few additional languages: French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, German. Thank you. Yeah, Western languages. Um, and of course, with the nuances, we train our we train our models on um, on the actual audio, so we have the the context around the language. Um, what was the the last part of the question? Uh, yeah. Oh, like mixing multiple language. languages. Yeah. yeah. So with m mixing multiple languages, we are able to, you know, sometimes it it becomes very very difficult. Like, let's be honest. But uh, if they are using, let's say, two languages in the same session and you know they, they don't use like two words in english two words in french like all the time then we are able to segment it and we can show the analysis in multiple languages and actually um i can show you going back to the report um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Mm 
Uh, where is that? Sorry. You will see that uh, you know detected English here, but you can have multiple languages as well. Like you, th this, this view will show you multiple languages. Will that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. I actually have another question as well on a different topic. Uh, if no one else has questions, <laughs> um, how does your system affect or help moderators? Because that's also a topic in this area that's often overlooked. Like their, how to say, like mental safety when when they review all the things. Um, do you? How do you consider that? Yeah, so uh, you know, working on this myself, uh, I'm exposed to a lot of toxicity and it's definitely not easy. Uh, and depending on the size of the company, you might have like a group of moderators that does their job and that's what they do and uh, they have their own processes. But we are introducing automated modera moderation sometime soon. So that uh, should definitely take care of you know, the most difficult cases. Um, and without even like having a moderator in place to do it. So we're definitely uh, going in that direction. Okay, so there are no, there's not, it's not the case that there's always a moderator in the end uh, making the decision. Well, at the moment with our current offering, you need to have a moderator to, to make the final decision. Uh, apart from, you can, you can have multiple queues, like I said before. But we're going in the direction of automated uh, moderation, and it's something we're working on, like, coming uh, Q4, Q1. Yeah. Thank soon. you very much. Yeah. So thank you for a nice presentation. Um, how you guys deal with uh, different variations from same language, like German-German, uh, Austrian-German, Swiss-German, and they're like in Austria, it's like eight, no, not eight, but so five versions of German, so right. how you deal with it? So like I said, for voice, we currently only support English and uh, uh, some uh, Western languages. Uh, for text, we train the data on text that comes from these, uh, con uh, from these countries. So it's not like we say French and we, you know, Quebecois and French for us is the same. No, we take data from Quebec, data from, uh, uh, from Quebecois, uh, data from uh, French people. And of course, that just the data itself will have the nuances in it. And um, yeah, for voice, of course, it becomes a bit more complex, uh, but we're going slowly and adding languages. So taking our time to make sure we, we're doing it right. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, I have a question about data privacy and sort of protecting that from the users, like not from the users, but protecting the user's data privacy. And I, I think I, I need to preface this by saying that I think moderation is very important. And I hear, I hear the cries of the moderators that I work with across the Atlantic, they would kill for a dashboard like you showed in that, in that presentation. But at the same time, uh, as users, of a game, or I think this might be more relevant to places that are more social or more sort of slow games as they communicate with other users in those environments, they might talk about very private or very sort of sensitive topics as well. And having a permanent record of audio files or even just like textual data of that on a server can lead to both legal and sort of community sentiment issues, right? Where, where people might not want to use your platform because it, you know, you're recording everything that I say for, for that matter. Yeah. So sort of how does, how does your solution work with that? Yeah, um, it is not permanent. It is purged on a time basis. Um, but um, it, it's also right now on a trigger. So like if you're doing reports um, and soon if you mute somebody, like you can configure that to collect audio. Like, okay, why is someone getting muted? Uh, are they doing something bad? Um, and so we right now are trying to be careful as we introduce more things and making sure that we kind of do things appropriately and like for what games actually need. Um, and then also making sure that, you know, we will make sure data gets purged as well as like potentially if you need things like metadata for like, hey, I sanctioned a player, I need to kind of like know why. Um, that's why you can kind of choose things like, why did I sanction this player and have like a reason of verbal abuse? 
Um, and then as we kind of develop more and more and get to automation, we'll try to make sure we hit on the right notes of like, well, what met metadata is important to keep so that you can refer back to it in the event of appeals and things like that. And that's why you can revoke actions as well. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think we just, want to be storing data forever. Just to, uh, just to build on that, uh, games have to, to oh, yeah. take consent from players to be recorded, right? So you're, you're going to have a, a pop-up that tells you, okay, you're going to be recorded for moderation purposes, and you're going to have to uh, opt in, right? And Vivox actually provides you a mechanism with um, to call like a, a consent endpoint, and that gets stored on the, on the Unity servers as well. And just another point is that we don't store it indefinitely. There's, you know, there's a time to live, uh, and uh, but the key part here that it's you have to give consent, and if you don't give consent, you can, the players can decide. You can still join. Let's say you can play the game definitely. You can join the the voice chat, but you're muted and you cannot unmute. For example. Thank you. Yeah, actually, um, a question is related to the cloud code with the, the whole integration process, especially with the language support. I think that uh, that's already answered, but let's say if I want to use Vbox for, say, voice and text, but I have a custom model, maybe I, uh, I don't want, I see some limitations with the model, but I want to extend it with my own model. Is that something you have in the pipe, uh, in the yeah. roadmap to support? You say you have your own data of toxicity and you want to tweak our models uh, with yeah, your instead data? Of, instead of using the model that Unity is providing, right. uh, is there a way to work with an external model that we have access to? or uh, Currently or not. Currently not. Uh, you know, we, we have access to a lot of data, so I think our models are, are pretty good, but uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to have custom models uh, in the workflow. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Since I know there was a few questions uh, that on stage there was no clear answer. I'm the one owning the safe voice, and I think some questions about how does the AI work with tone, et cetera. I just wanted to add a bit more clarity. We have um, text-based analysis, and we have tonal analysis. Over time, we're combining both and trying to get the, the information uh, from both combined to get better clarity. But I just want to make a point very clear. AI is not going to solve all the nuance and details. This is the first step to get people out of manual tasks that are very difficult to endure and get them some tooling. And specifically on the Unity stance, which is why we're here today, we want to make sure that we're providing tools that are good for our customers, like game developers, but also fair for our players. So in scenarios that they might have more nuanced use cases, we definitely listen to our customers and say, hey, we're noticing this. We don't have right now a detection that picks us up. Can we help and build something for that so we're fairer and we build together with our customers as well? And to the other point, just to say on the data privacy, et cetera, which is a great point, it's, it's a lot about the consent and informed consent. There's so much legislation coming out that I think is going to help and structure this so we have a lot more clarity and visibility over what people are keeping our data from as end consumers. Just to say we're working with the, the Digital Services Act, which is literally if you are making decisions or informed decisions around uh, people's access to things. I think gaming is a very small use case, but usually at government data and et cetera, we want to know how these models are making decisions. And we document everything to make sure if you think something was unfair, we will have the reports and you can contest it. So we're trying to keep, as industry <laughs> representatives, we're trying to keep all interests into play. And also to say, at least in Europe, we have a lovely thing called GDPR. So if at some point, just to say in general, at some point, if someone is really concerned about how your data is being used, you can always ask for some a level of information on this. Because our attempt is to try and simplify this to become easier for us to adopt these tools. We don't have a team of moderators at Unity. We use our customers' knowledge to build these tools. In the end, it's our customers who decide how to use the technology. We're there to guide them and to help them. But we're sure trying to keep the best interests of our players as well so that we know they're doing something that it's right and correct. And, and lastly, to say on, on the language and the nuance, even if we just get the top 
percentage of what's terrible already. I think it's a great step. Over time, I think localization and, and specialization, if you think, will start rolling out too. But for now, we're just quite, quite excited that we're able to show you this to you guys. So again, thank you for joining us today. If there's more questions, we'll be around until tomorrow. We do have our 8.30, 9 a.m. Oh, yeah. slot on the floor tomorrow. So if you do want to ask more detailed questions, we'll be around tomorrow uh, in the morning. It's one of the orange carpet areas with a, a sign that will say communication and safety. So all the details and stuff, you guys can join us there as well. Thank you once again, and thank you thank guys. Thank you very much.